scrolling. One down, take three. Backup. Note that name. That's not this Coppola Ford or this Coppola his son, but this Coppola. This Dean of Creative Arts Coppola. Who was this Coppola? What is this theater? It can hold 150 individuals. It has film projectors for 16mm and 35mm. Even if the last time one of the professors remembers booting up the 16 was in 2006. It's in the Fine Arts Building. Is there much more to say? I got a faculty member of the cinema department to digitally sit down with me and give me the lay of the theatrical land. Yeah, I'm now like the oldest uh, faculty member. I was the youngest when I came. This is strange. Uh, now I'm the oldest. We did and a whole you... thing in Italian American filmmakers throughout the history of America, and uh, we had a special couple of family room because they've been so important in the history of American film. An SF Gate article mentions that August bought the theater in 93, making it 29 years old as of 2022. For him, the theater was like going home. And Francis always talked about him as the kind of smarter older brother, you know, the guy that he was trying to live up to. The, fam the family thought more of August than they did of Francis, I guess, because Francis was kind of a late bloomer, as, as some artists are. And, but August was always a brilliant guy, but he was a, a literary fellow and he uh, became the dean of our school. And um, so he was into cinema as well. And uh, uh, he was kind of a Renaissance man from what I understand and, and uh, quite a, a sophisticated guy. And he had a famous espresso machine in his office. It was very grand and everybody loves to come and have espresso with him. And I wish I had known him. He sounds like a terrific guy, but. Apparently, the place has even had a screening of a mockumentary film that McBride ended up being a part of as an actor by a name you might know, Orson Welles. In the background here, you see me being directed by Orson Welles the first day of shooting on the other side of the wind, which is a legendary unfinished film that finally got finished in 2018. This picture was taken in 2017. But um, we did an event there. I showed that film, for example. That's the kind of thing we we did a special screening and uh, we did a panel discussion of it, and that was fun for me personally. But yeah, we've had a lot of filmmakers come in there, but off the top of my head, I don't remember any. Uh... When August was dean, he was actually able to get some other film names you might know to donate equipment. Ford and George Lucas. Equipment like this is important, much like the importance of the presence of the film projector in the theater itself. Just that having having access to projecting films from a, a different time, like how do you think that yeah. impacts the school? Well, you know, it's a matter of discussion among uh, film academics and film scholars that it's a shame not to show a film in 35 because that's the optimum way to show a film that was shot on film. And most films now are made on digital, actually. All this talk about preservation. Film is fragile. Prints are lost over time, including bits of this one, this very own documentary you're watching right now. The irony is that the interview we shot with another cinema professor was actually lost to hard drive corruption. When a student film loses an interview, the stakes might be low. But what happens when chunks of films are corrupted in perhaps a bigger budget film? A lot of films got lost, and 90% of American films have been lost over the years. The studios, have, they used to not take care of their films. They would throw them away or literally burn them. And uh, Because every time there's an upgrade in the digital system, the archive has to buy new machines, and it's very expensive. And then they have to keep transferring, and it's terribly uh, time-consuming and expensive. And uh, I mean, I'll give you an example. Toy Story 2, which is a huge box of a set of gross something like I don't know, $350 million. They they were about to put out a home video release and they found out they had lost the film. This is a Pixar film. And they, somebody had hit the wrong button and lost the film. You know, this is what could happen. And it turned out that 
one of their employees had taken a copy home with her and she made a copy on her home computer and that's how they preserved this well-known film. It's important to understand the history of what we watch in the theater today. Only so much can be said about a place where things happened. It was a container for so much more. Something August hoped to leave, not just a place he enjoyed, but a future for filmmakers where they could enjoy it too.